Hey, good morning, it's Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. I had an email from a viewer that, uh, and I've had a couple of these over the last month, <clears throat> asking me about investment properties in Surrey. Does it make sense to, to buy a, a pre-sale? Some of them are brand new, others are a few years old. Some have been in the Wally area, central Surrey area, uh, and my opinion on that. Well, first things first, I, you know, I'm not a Surrey realtor, uh, nor do I play one on TV. So I can't, you know, I, I be honest, I don't know the Surrey market all that well. It's probably been five or six years since I've even been in Surrey. But both these uh, uh, viewers had said, you know, Surrey's on the up, it's booming, Wally, uh, you've got, a, I think, an SFU campus out there now, it's right on SkyTrain, there's lots of condo development coming in. So, uh, and they, they had done their homework. The one guy here had, had broken it down to what he thought he could get for rent versus what he has to pay for it and the taxes and everything else. So, I mean, the long and the short of it is, I would say, go for it. I mean, if you like the area, um, maybe you live in Surrey, I'm not sure. This particular guy said he lived in Van lives in Vancouver. So that's one thing to keep in mind on. If you're living in Vancouver and you're, you're buying investment properties in Surrey, keep in mind that you're gonna have to go back and forth periodically, especially when you have to get a new tenant in there, you're gonna be going back and forth. So uh, I like to keep my investment properties close to where I live, and that's Vancouver and Richmond. I live in Vancouver, but I, it's an easy drive to, to Richmond, and my office is in Richmond. So I'm back and forth all the time. Uh, that's for that reason, I don't know if I'd wanna start getting into investment properties that are an hour drive each way, uh, because things can happen. But let's get back to this. I would say, for sure, it sounds like you guys have done your due diligence on it. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a big believer in if the numbers make sense, buy the thing, put a tenant in there, put 20% down, and uh, you will have some income on that property. Uh, as far as a cash flow, uh, on a cash flow basis, it'll be about break even. You may have to supplement it 100 bucks a month, but keep in mind, uh, that would be covering everything. Not only your uh, mortgage uh, interest, but your principal, your property taxes, your maintenance fees. So, uh, you know, you can't really go wrong with that. Uh, buy the property, put a tenant in there, and keep it for the long term, and eventually pay the thing off and just start taking in that free cash flow. So you really can't go wrong with it. In my book, I call it the ghost ship principle and I'll give you some examples of it. Now, the other thing he asked me about was maybe going in with a friend 50-50 on this unit. And hey, that can work out too. That's a good idea. And again, I talk about this in my book on ways to get in the market, some creative ways for financing and things like that. And that method I used about well, close to 22 years ago with a townhouse I bought in Vancouver, where I went in with a business partner. Now, what I would advise you to do on that if you want to do a co-ownership uh, deal is make sure you go to a lawyer and draft a co-ownership agreement. And this is so important. A handshake isn't going to do it. You're probably going to spend six, seven hundred dollars for that from that lawyer to draft this agreement. But what that would do is it would spell out uh, how this is structured. You would both own the property equally. You would rent it out. You would share in all the expenses, the repairs, any um, uh, shortfall every year would be split 50-50. The other important thing it would spell out is if what if one partner wants to sell and you don't, and that can happen. Every partner will tell you, "Hey, we're both on the same page. Let's rent it for ten or fifty years and keep it but things change I can tell you from my situation we were both long-term investors at least so I thought five years into this deal the partner I was in with wanted to sell and uh, luckily in the co-ownership agreement it gave me the first right to buy out his share so in that case I did that I had the money and I was able to buy out his share and keep the property on my own I he, we removed him from title and I was the sole owner um, but if you can't do that, uh, this co-ownership agreement would spell out then if you don't have first right to buy it, then you would list the property, of course, and then split the proceeds from the sale. But make sure if you go in on a co-ownership, you get a lawyer to draft a contract. It's mandatory. But I would say for sure, if Wally makes sense to you, you can buy a property at the right price, put a good tenant in there, and, and you think uh, you can break even on it or even have a little bit of positive, uh, a little bit of income on it, I would say go for it, buy it, and keep it. Um, 
So I hope that helps. I, you know, another area though that I am quite bullish on and I know it is New Westminster. And I've done blogs on this in the past. Um, uh, 2016, I had uh, quite a few clients that I sold into New Westminster. And uh, I did a blog on it a couple of years ago talking about how it's not your grandmother's New Westminster anymore. The one thing I like about New Westminster over Surrey is that the old saying, it's a bridge too far. And at least New Westminster, you don't have to go over a bridge. Um, now, don't let that dissuade you from Surrey, but for my, for me, I just kind of like the way everything adds up for New Westminster. Quick SkyTrain ride in, and uh, I think the prices are pretty reasonable as well. I kind of look at it as the Brooklyn to Manhattan. So keep an eye on New Westminster as well. I think that could also represent a pretty good buy. Uh, another area I like, there still are a few gems in Richmond as well that are on SkyTrain. Uh, older condos that you can pick up at a pretty good price, put a tenant in there, and they'd make a good long-term buy and hold. I'm Owen Bigland. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.